Well, happy Tuesday, Carol. How are you doing? Tô bem. I'm fine. Very nice, very nice. When did you get back? I know that, uh, you know, you were spending some time in Vegas. Did you, when, how many days have you been back home now? Não, hoje faz uma semana que eu voltei de Vegas. Estou aqui no Brasil. Today it's been one week since I'm back. Okay, all right. So plenty of time readjusting to the climate and everything. Uh, and just how was Vegas overall? Because, of course, congratulations on the win. I'm sure that was a very nice part of it. But you stayed some extra time. So what did you get to do that was uh, maybe a little additional vacation part of things? Ah, sim, nós somos... Me and my friend went to Mount Charleston to go see the snow because I've never seen snow in here in Brazil as it's very warm, so that was fun. Okay, so that makes a whole lot of sense. I saw on your Instagram all the snowy pictures you were taking. I was like, wait a minute, where is there snow that she's at, like in Vegas? Or there's no way there's snow in Brazil, right? So I was very confused about that, but uh, that is very cool. Did it live up to your expectations seeing snow for the first time? <laughs> ah, sim, foi bem legal. Uh, it was very fun. Uh, it wasn't as cold as I had expected, but we were able to have a great time. It was awesome. Very nice. Are you hoping to maybe one day uh, try some snowboarding or some skiing when you can get up to a mountain that uh, is really full of snow? <laughs> We, we had plans to ski, but as I kind of hurt my knee on, in the octagon, um, uh, we decided that it wouldn't be the best thing to do so, as it could have worsened the, the injury. But next time, definitely I'll try it out. Yeah, definitely don't want to, you know, to make anything worse by doing some snow activities because it is very easy, you know, all the falling down, especially if you're new to it. Uh, I can give you some advice there, but uh, definitely a very, you know, good getaway snowboarding or skiing is getting up to the mountain is always amazing. But, um, you know, as for that win, you know, congratulations again. I just got to ask, like, how good of a feeling is it, you know, get on this three fight winning streak in the UFC and you're right now. So congratulations there too. Just how good is this feeling of, you know, you're really building up some momentum now in the UFC. It's a great feeling. Um, I always fight to win. So it was a great feeling to come back home with a victory and being able to share that with all the people that I love. My coach's goal was to was that I began this year with a victory. So that was the first goal that we already achieved. And I'm excited to achieve all the following goals this year. Absolutely. And I got to wonder, like, is it all that much more sweeter to, you know, get this momentum going, like I said, but to do it after, man, you kind of had some bad luck with six fight cancellations already in your UFC career, which is, you know, an unfortunate amount. But now that you're really getting going and getting past that, like, does that make it that much sweeter? You're like, oh, OK, I can get some fights now. Things are <laughs> coming together. Ah, claro, foi. Treinei muito antes. I trained so much, so definitely it was a great feeling. Um, when the fights were canceled, I didn't stop training, so it was very gratifying to finally being able to fight and get get the win. Então, concluir com uma vitória depois de tanto treinamento é muito gratificante. Yeah, and after like so many fight cancellations specifically for julia avila which for some reason i guess you guys just are meant to fight you know four times getting that one canceled but after so many in a row like do you have to sometimes do something you know whether it's just mental or something just remind yourself of reasons to stay determined or be more determined like all right this is just some a bad luck you know rough patch of these fights falling through we'll get back to it do you ever have to like readjust your mentality sometimes when when things might be a little hard and not getting fights, like there was that patch that you had. 
Ah, não, eu sou uma pessoa muito tranquila. I'm a very então, chill person, so I wasn't really bothered that much. Um, when the fights were cancelled, I continued training and I knew that I needed to continue training because another fight would appear any moment. And that's exactly what happened. So I continued focusing on training and and knowing that soon another opportunity would appear. I'm not very anxious, so that wasn't really a problem for me. Well, that is great to hear. You know, a lot of people, I think, might, you know, get a little bit demoralized by that kind of situation. But yeah, you've come out of it much stronger. So uh, props to you, and it's great to see. Um, and just kind of speaking of that hard work that you've put in, like, it's, is it kind of crazy to think that you've almost been fighting for 10 years now as a pro? Do you ever like, kind of look back and see, oh, wow, you know, we've been going at this for a long time and my hard, my hard work is finally paying off? I actually began fighting when I was 13 years old, so I've been fighting for 13 years. Um, and I, since then I've been training well, I haven't had many injuries, so I definitely feel that I'm achieving a, one of my peaks, but I think that there are many more peaks to come. Of course, and did you always want to be a fighter like before you turned 13 like what were you doing in your childhood was it was there always you know that goal in mind to you oh you know what i want to punch people in the face one day see <laughs> see sí, sí, pequena yeah since i was a child i always loved to play fight with my friends and with my family members so it was actually my cousin who took me to the gym and i was gonna when i was 13 i was gonna try out a box class but it ended up being a jiu-jitsu class and after that class i realized that this is what i wanted to do awesome just like that got to experience one little aspect of it then you get sucked right in so um It worked out. It worked out very well for you. Um, and did you have any like inspirations kind of or, or role models, maybe people you looked up to in the fight game, you know, as you got started, who uh, really helped motivate you to get to, you know, where you are today? <laughs> My inspiration has always been my family. When I was young, I think how I could give more opportunities to my mother and to my sister. And soon I discovered that through fighting, I'd be able to do that. So I train as much as I could so I one day would be able to help my, my family out. And I'd even skip school to be able to train. So... Um, yeah, this is something that uh, I really wanted to, to do, especially for my family. Some dedication right there. Easy to stay motivated when you, you know, you got the family that you're looking to take care of. So that is awesome to hear. Uh, and I know that you've also worked very closely with a good friend uh, and training partner, Jessica Andraj. And of course, she has been, you know, been able to become champion, had very great success in her career. I'm just curious, you know, what has it been like kind of working you know, with her and, you know, I'm sure learning from her and just being motivated to achieve, you know, what she was able to by becoming champion. So every time we train, we always train together and it's always a war. When, when, we, when we fight, the whole gym stops to watch us fight because they know that it's going to be a tough battle. When the coach calls us out for a battle, me and Jessica, we look at each other because we know that a tough fight is going to come and that we're going to give us our, we're going to give our all to it. So we really help each other out, changing positions, helping each other out to, to find out what's the best position to do certain, certain techniques. So it's a great partnership. Yeah, I can't really go wrong there. Uh, definitely always a fun, fun uh, gym atmosphere to have somebody who will really push you like that. So great stuff. Um, you know, Carol, I wanted to go back a little bit earlier into your career. Uh, you know, we've been talking about the, the 13 year stretch, pardon me. But from 2014 to 2016, you had a gap. And I was just curious, you know, if there was a reason for not fighting. Was it as simple as not being able to find opponents? But just what was the case, uh, you know, between 2014 and 2016? É, eu tive uma lesão no joelho. É, eu, deixa eu pensar. 2014, 2016. Eu não sei se eu estava no UFC. Eu estava no UFC? Eu acho que não, né? Era antes, foi antes do UFC. Nem eu. She's asking, was I already in the UFC in 2016? 
Uh, she's asking me. I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> Ele acha que não. Eu também acho que não. Ah, tá. Então, é, foi porque eu. So I, I think that during that period, I, I fought for a championship belt in Rio de Janeiro, and I ended up winning the fight with the KO. But in the fight, I broke my two hands, and it was a real long recovery process. Uh, my both hands were in casts for two months, and in total was a seven-month recovery process. After that, I ended up having a fight, but I I lost the fight, and I think that I lost the fight really because of my mental side was still affected by the injury that I had suffered. So I think that, that period was because of that. Wow. Well, that's kind of crazy breaking both hands and still getting the victory in that one. So uh, is that probably probably the worst injury you've had to deal with? I mean, both of them, that's a very rare thing. The only other time I've heard of that happening is I think Uriah Faber in one of his WEC fights, but is that probably the worst thing you've had to endure as a fighter? <laughs> Nossa, inclusive essa essa luta foi uma das minhas melhores. Yeah, that was actually one of my best fights ever. It was a five round fight and and it was incredible. When we finished the fourth round, my coach told me that I I already had punched her enough and that I needed to take her to the ground and finish it on the ground because he was worried that I was going to suffer really really hard injuries. Um, and so in the fifth round, I was able to take her to the ground and I finished her with my elbows. At the end, I ended up winning the belt, and when they gave me the belt was when I realized that something was wrong, because I could barely hold the belt, I, really, I felt lots of pain in my hands. So when I took off my gloves, I realized the swelling in my hands, and I, the next day I went to the doctor and I realized that it broke both my metacarps, I'm not sure if that's the right translation, but, um, and so, so yeah, it was really, really tough, but it was at the same time one of my, one of my best fights. Mas até então na luta eu nem tava sentindo nada, tava continuando bater sem sentir dor. You beat her up so bad that you broke both your hands, essentially. So um, pretty impressive. I would say that is not something a lot of people can say. So uh, props to you for that. <laughs> and, um, you know, just to go back to uh, more recent victories, of course, the Jocelyn Edwards fight. Got to talk about that a little bit. Uh, just an overall complete performance from you. I think that was one that, you know, showed a lot of people what you're capable of. Um, that maybe did not know before. So just, is that how you expected that fight to play out? Like it, it went about as well as it could have aside from, you know, getting that cut on your mouth. <laughs> So when we discovered that, when we arrived at the hotel and we discovered that the fight had changed, they were going to fight Jocelyn Edwards, we ended up changing strategy. With Nico, the strategy was for me to use my Mai Tai, but when the opponent changed, my coach told me that maybe the best idea was to explore my Jiu-Jitsu better and to take her to the ground and show my strength there and that's exactly what i did i think that i proved how well of a round how i'm a well-rounded fighter yep absolutely hard to disagree with that and um you know i mentioned the cut and of course that didn't really affect things whatsoever you still went out there and you know you had 11 total minutes of control which is almost the entire fight which is pretty you don't see that very often um But in a case where, you know, you can see so much of your own blood kind of <laughs> just on the canvas, do you, even though it's not bothering you, do you get worried at all of like, maybe the ref would stop it? Is that something that goes through your head or are you just so focused and just doing what you're doing that you don't think of that kind of stuff? <laughs> So I never thought that the referee would stop the fight because I didn't actually know where the injury was. I would rub my face to see if there was lots of blood coming and no blood was coming from my face where I could feel it. So I wasn't really worried during the fight, but afterwards my corner told me that he was really worried that the referee could stop the fight. Yeah, you, you never know, but um, it obviously didn't affect your performance at all. But uh, that was just kind of an interesting thing to see, you know, when somebody when the person who's clearly winning is having you know, <laughs> a big kind of blood issue. But uh, worked out, worked out in the end. So uh, with that in mind, Carol, like three in a row in the UFC, like I said, uh, longer winning streak overall. 
You're ranked number 14 now. Do you have any ideas of maybe who you want next and just when are you looking to, you know, get back in there? Oh, é, eu, assim, lutador em I don't have actually anyone specific in mind that I want to fight. Um, I'd prefer someone coming from a win and someone above me in the rankings. Um, ideally, maybe someone around number 10, number 9, because um, that would give me a good jump. But I, I don't have anyone in mind. Of course, that is totally fine. Uh, you know, just whoever whoever is ahead of you in the rankings is always a good person to get. And, you know, I know that you talked about this a little bit, I think, before this fight going in. Um, but, you know, the Bantamweight division right now is kind of one that is still needing, you know, some new contenders. And it's great to see, you know, fighters like you coming up now. So how realistically, how soon, you know, do you think that you could work your way to a title shot in a division that kind of, you know, needs people to emerge and, you know, like yourself, who has really, you know, gotten rolling here. Well, é, a categoria, ela tá bem rasa. Tá yeah, the Bantamweight division now is a pretty é, shallow division. I think that maybe Eu with two or three more wins, um, that maybe é, I'll be there fighting for the belt. Um, me and my coach are sure it's going to happen one day that I'm going to become the champion one day. We have no doubt about that. But we're not really in a hurry to get there. So who knows what ends up happening in the division. Um, but maybe by the end of next year, I'm already there having my chance to fight for the title. Yeah, just got to keep working on the right track. Um, you know, take it at your own pace, of course. Uh, everybody's different in that regard. Um, and, you know, this is a little bit random now, Carol, and we've kind of mentioned it already, but do you still hope to fight Julia Avila at all? I know four times getting that fight canceled. Is that something you've just totally given up on? Or uh, would you be open to trying to do that again if, you know, if she works her way to, you know, works her way up the ladder and kid could set it up maybe? <laughs> Not now, because Julia's coming off a loss, I'm coming off of a win, so that, that fight doesn't really interest me right now. I'm looking to fight people who are above me in the ranking. Of course, wasn't suggesting it next, but just, you know, maybe if it was possible down the line again, just because four times, that's a, that's a lot of cancellations, and I could understand you not wanting that anymore. But, um, but you know, I'm curious now, Outside of MMA stuff, you know, we've already been talking about snowboarding, skiing type activities. You know, what are some things, some hobbies maybe that you have that you like to do outside of MMA related activities, whether it's like maybe video games, maybe you like to watch a bunch of movies or other sports. Just what are some things you like to do unrelated to, uh, you know, face punching? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love to watch movies, series, I love to play video games. I'm not really that much of an outgoing person, so things that I can do at home, that's more of what I need. To. Awesome, that's always good stuff, especially during these wild times we're living in where we can't, you know, go out and do too much. But uh, with that in mind, I got to know then, what are some things that you've watched recently maybe some games you played give me some recommendations what what have you been into lately <laughs> oh eu gosto de assistir séries assim so i really like to watch series and movies that are in the suspense genre um, one that i've been watching lately is how to get away with murder and i really like that one and a few video games that i like to play are call of duty grand theft auto um, yeah, that's very nice getting the classics in there with the games can't go wrong with either of those um all right awesome stuff there i will uh definitely have to check out the the series as well so thank you for that um sounds good carol thank you um all right so one final thing i will leave you with here before we wrap up uh just 2021 goals you know what are where are you hoping to be by the time that the next year rolls around, what will you have wanted to accomplish this year, whether it's in the cage or out of the cage? Inside the octagon, my goals are to first enter top 10 and then enter top five. And I think I can get that until the end of the year. And personally, I want to continue helping my family, my mother, my brother, my sister. Um, that's really important for me too. So on a personal level, that's what I want to aim to achieve. 
I'll see you in the next Oh hey, you made it to the end. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you like this video and want to see more like it, give it a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Until then, we'll see you next time.